Good. Right, well, I'm Jimmy Carr. These are my jokes. Let's not fuck about. <laughs> before we get started, who's seen me before? <laughs> who's never seen me before? <laughs> you sound happier. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure this is working. According to Ofcom, the people that make the guidelines for television, according to Ofcom, the most offensive words on TV are the F word and the C word. But I'm live on stage this evening, so I can say whatever the fuck I like. <laughs> and those cunts can't do anything about it. <laughs> I had trouble getting out tonight. I had to organise a babysitter. Uh, I don't have children. <laughs> I just found they're a lot cheaper than escorts. <laughs> She's 17, there's nothing she won't do for 50 pounds. <laughs> sort of half a joke, that, isn't it? Because it's quite funny, but also true. <laughs> when I'm away from home, I sometimes get lovesick. Well, they call it chlamydia. <laughs> I spend a lot of my time away from home, because this is my job. I travel around the country telling jokes to people, I love it. But I spend a lot of my time away staying in hotels, because I have to travel. I was in a hotel a couple of weeks ago, walked into the hotel room. As I walked in there, just on the TV, it said, the adult channel is disabled. <laughs> I thought, that's a bit specialist. <laughs> I'm joking. I was gutted, no spaz porn. <laughs> I'm sure you've all seen this, Birmingham. On trains, they've got seats reserved for elderly, disabled and pregnant people. Begs the question, who's fucking all these old cripples? <laughs> Do you ever hear anything so dumb, it's almost brilliant? So stupid, it just it takes you a moment to work out what just happened. I'll give you an example. I was on a bus, I heard this girl get on the bus, walk up to the driver and go, can I get a return? And the driver went, where to? And she went, back here. <laughs> It took me like an extra beat to... What's going on? Oh, she's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> People worry about their physical appearance. We've all got silly hang-ups. Personally, I worry that one of my balls is bigger than the other two. <laughs> I shave my testicles. I call them Brazil nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me giggle. Because it tickles when I do it. The first few weeks of joining Weight Watchers, you're just finding your feet. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Altogether or not at all on the laughter, I think. <laughs> Feed line, punch line, laugh. Don't fuck about. <laughs> you're getting it late nonsense. Um, are there any ginger people in tonight? We got any ginger people? Yes. Well, seem to have contained the problem there. Good. <laughs> Ginger people get given a hard time. People say very unkind things about gingers, but I think you should be destroyed humanely. <laughs> I can talk. Check out the look I'm rocking. I look like a Lego Hitler. <laughs> That's his stuff. Hmm? When I broke up with my last girlfriend, I said, I said, I blame myself. I should never have let you let yourself go. <laughs> But you have, so you have to fuck off. <laughs> Do you read the Sunday papers, Birmingham? Do you all read the Sunday papers? I like the papers on a Sunday morning. I think it's a nice time to reflect on the last week and also to look ahead for the next week. We read the Sunday papers, like the News of the World, in, in bed, Sunday morning, a couple of weeks ago, tea, toast, Sunday papers. What could be nicer? What could be more British? Anyway, my girlfriend turns to me. There's some sex scandal in the News of the World, as there invariably is. And my girlfriend turned to me and went, I hope I never find out you're having an affair. I said, me too. You can be the moral arbiter on this one, Birmingham, right? You be the moral arbiter on this one this evening. I've got a friend, he got dumped by his girlfriend. She ended their relationship just because he said something. They were, they were making love, they were mid-coitus. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> as he orgasmed, as he, as he, as he arrived, <laughs> ejaculated, came. The most intimate, but also the most vulnerable time for a man, as, as that occurred, as he... He said, bang, and the dirt is gone. <laughs> I 
I can see two distinct groups of men. There's some men looking at me as if to say, I don't think that's that bad. <laughs> I think maybe she's overreacted a little bit. And then I can see other men looking at me as if to say, note to self. <laughs> You've got to be very careful with jokes in the bedroom because it's quite funny to say to a girl who's sucking you off, it's rude to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> but it's even funnier if she says, well, it's not full. <laughs> Having sex with someone at work is all right, as long as you don't work in a primary school. I've got a friend who's a part-time teacher. Well, they're all part-time. <laughs> Are there teachers in? Come on, it's your own time you're wasting. <laughs> Where are the teachers? Give us a shout, the teachers. <laughs> and what was it that first attracted you to um, children? <laughs> Not all teachers, obviously, that would be mental, but PE teachers, they're wrong -uns. <laughs> You know what PE is short for? Pedo. You can look that up. <laughs> you know why so many American kids die in high school massacres? It's because they're not allowed to run in the corridors. <laughs> Take your time with that, that's wrong on a number of levels. <laughs> it's very I don't know if you've noticed this, Birmingham. It's very difficult to get the first kiss right. You want to be firm, but gentle. You want to be manly, but you don't want to wake her up. <laughs> First dates are very delicate. Is anyone on a first date this evening? <laughs> Is anyone on a first date, no? Yeah, yeah. On your own? <laughs> Seems a little bit suspect, doesn't it? <laughs> We're going somewhere very special. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I realise women don't masturbate. You just expect us to believe you really enjoy baths. <laughs> Well, my first, my, well, good luck if you're on a first date. See, first dates are very delicate, because if you call her the next day, she'll think you're too keen, she'll be put off. I, if you never phone, she'll think the worst of you. So what I do as a compromise is I phone her the next day and call her a slag. <laughs> Sometimes you can sense a friend wants to take things further. Will it ruin the friendship? Things get hot and heavy on the sofa one night, you think, this doesn't feel right. You're my best friend. You're not even allowed on the couch. <laughs> Bad dog, town boy. <laughs> Did I say down boy? <laughs> I've made it gay. <laughs> I fucked a girl with one leg. <laughs> Should have used my cock. <laughs> I realise this joke does not require a mime. <laughs> it's a Saturday night in Birmingham, come on. <laughs> I said to my girlfriend, I said, um, I said, you want to experiment with a role-play rape fantasy? She said, no! I said, that's the spirit. <laughs> Rape is such a horrible word, though. It's such a harsh, brutal, awful word. Rape. That's why I prefer to call it a struggle snuggle. <laughs> you couldn't stay mad at a struggle snuggleist, could you? <laughs> Bloody adorable. Um, now, I've been a comedian now for about 10 years. I've been doing this job for about 10 years, and I thought this year, I thought this year, I would try and get a bit better. Not a crazy idea, right? One of the things I was quite weak on was regional accents. Is anyone here good at regional accents? <laughs> no, you could barely say the word yes there, so... <laughs> you're not even good at talking, never mind accents. <laughs> but but I, I, I was no good at doing regional accents, and it's one of those things that, as a comedian, it's quite good if you could be good at regional accents, because it's good for telling jokes, but... I thought, well, I'll go away, I'll do some research. This evening I would like to give you a masterclass in regional accents, because I've discovered the secret, and the secret is this. All you need is a key phrase to get you started in the regional dialect, and then you're golden. Once you get started, once you get it in your head, you're fine. But getting started can be tricky. So I'll kick off with, um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll kick off with Scouse. Any Scousers in? We've got a Scouser over there, where's the Scouser? Give us a shout. 
Don't worry, we're not going to take your benefits away. <laughs> This is the phrase I use to do the Scouse accent. This is the phrase I have in my head to, to get me started in the Scouse. I want some chicken and a can of coke. I want some chicken and a can of coke. I want some chicken and a can of coke. A can of coke. I want some chicken and a can of coke. The little head bobble just comes if you say it a few times. I want some chicken and a can of coke. Well, let's make the Scousers feel at home. Let's everyone. On three, I want some chicken and a can of coke. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Fantastic, Birmingham. <laughs> Bloody well done. I know. Now, obviously, obviously, that's just to get you started. Once you get started, then you can say something properly, authentically, scouts. I want some chicken and a can of coke. I'm going on the rob. <laughs> I've got to get a prezi. <laughs> it's me grand's birthday. <laughs> She's 30. <laughs> Anyone in from Belfast? Anyone from Belfast? You're Bel Belfast? Where's Belfast? Hey, Belfast. This is the phrase I use to get the Belfast accent right. Ginger and community. <laughs> The terrifying stare is optional, <laughs> but I find it helps. Ginger and community. <laughs> community has more syllables than you thought it had. <laughs> okay, let's try everyone. Let's go Belfast. Ginger and community. One, two, three. <laughs> Perfect. You are now all qualified to say there's a bomb in the car. <laughs> Roller coaster, pooper scooper, umpa lumpa, Kawasaki, four unrelated words, meaningless in all respects, other than if you're trying to do the Geordie accent. <laughs> in which case, they're a fucking gift. <laughs> Roller coaster, <laughs> pooper scooper, <laughs> umpa lumpa, Kawasaki. <laughs> this makes me happy. Um, All together. Roller coaster. Poopa scoopa. Oompa loompa. Kawasaki. Perfect. <laughs> Are there any Geordies in? <laughs> no, presumably they're outside with their shirts off fighting. <laughs> but I wonder what the fellas are up to. Well, should we go any Welsh people in? Yeah. My God, we've got an army. Hello, the Welsh. <laughs> now, I've discovered the secret to the Welsh accent isn't so much a phrase, it's more a state of mind. To do a good Welsh accent, you've just got to sound confused. <laughs> Whose coat is that jacket? <laughs> Whose shoes are those trainers? Let's all try. Whose coat is that jacket? <laughs> Whose shoes are those trainers? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> See those two houses? The one in the middle is mine. <laughs> that paper you're sitting on, are you reading that? <laughs> I came out of the shop and there was my bike. Gone. Anyone from Manchester? No one from Manchester. Manchester's pretty, the accent's pretty easy for Manchester. You just need three words. Started. All right. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> See, one of my best friends is from Manchester. He's called Ali. He was named after where he was conceived. <laughs> <laughs> Any Scottish people? We got Scottish? Hello. You're living the stereotype, aren't you, love? 
Obviously, the Scottish accent, probably the best phrase to use is, there's been a murder. <laughs> Chances are there probably fucking has been. <laughs> of course, living in Scotland, the main benefits are unemployment and housing. <laughs> See, the Scouser's ears are perked up. <laughs> like a chavvy meerkat. What? There is a bit of a drink problem in Scotland, I hope you don't mind me saying. Yeah, up there they think I'm a double act. <laughs> and the drugs, you wouldn't believe the fucking drugs. Whereabouts in Scotland are you from? Fort William. Fort William, I don't know where the fuck that is. <laughs> what, what, sorry? <laughs> You've got sort of where an accent meets your speech impediment, I think. <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> are you introducing yourself? <laughs> Sorry. Um, didn't mean it. Sorry. But the drugs in the drugs in Scotland. My, up in, in Scotland, they call it methadone. It's called. I can't believe it's not heroin. <laughs> I think the easiest accent in the UK is the West Country because the West Country is just a pirate voice, isn't it? Who can't do a fucking pirate voice? Ah. <laughs> I'm going on a date <laughs> with my sister. Oh, my mammy doesn't find out. <laughs> I'm cheating on her. <laughs> Are there people in from the West Country? <laughs> hey there. Hi. Right. Hi. Right, hello. <laughs> Not being patronising, I just thought it'd be a little treat for you to see a hand with five fingers. <laughs> 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 Now, what would be the phrase? If I was going to try and do the Birmingham accent, what would be the phrase for Birmingham? What would be the thing if I was going to... All right. <laughs> All right. All right. The other phrase that seems to come up a lot in Birmingham is, it's fucking shit here. <laughs> All right, it's fucking shit here. <laughs> Any other phrases for Birmingham? What other...? What was that? <laughs> That was just all vowels. <laughs> what was it? A yow. A yow, right. <laughs> a yow, all right. Have you had a stroke? <laughs> I said I shouldn't really joke about strokes. If I ever have a stroke, I'll be laughing out the other side of my face. <laughs> Are there any other words, any other key phrases for Birmingham? What, sorry? Cup of tea. Cup of tea. How am ya? How am ya? How am ya? Poorly educated? Have we got any other exotic accents in the room? Is anyone from overseas or any more exciting? Anyone, any, anyone from the UK that we've missed? Any, any other places in the UK? Jersey! Jersey? <laughs> you haven't got an accent, you tax-dodging scum. <laughs> oh. Who knew there was that much anti-Jersey feeling? <laughs> It was simmering under. Finally, someone said it. <laughs> You're basically French now. Fuck off. <laughs> Has anyone else got a different accent that we haven't covered? Essex. Essex, you mug him off, you fucking slag. <laughs> you fucking toilet. up. Come on, come on. Fucking slag. <laughs> I don't know how they make Essex men. Presumably, a man fucks a chicken. Uh, any others? Aussie. What, sorry? Aussie. Aussie? I can do Aussie. I can do. Yorkshire. Is it... <laughs> Yorkshire? It's twenty-five pounds a ticket. I thought we priced you out. <laughs> Yorkshire? Yorkshire? I say what I like, and I like what I bloody well say. <laughs> Whip it, tetley, frugal, cricket. <laughs> 
My favourite Yorkshire phrase is tin, tin, tin. <laughs> which means it isn't in the tin. <laughs> tin, tin, tin. <laughs> oh, tin, tin, tin. <laughs> Who do we have? Uh, who's, who's Australian? Give us, a, give us a shout, Australian man. Hey! Are you still fucking there? Where are you? <laughs> I can do Australian, I can do, is it the Prime Minister or the President? I can re never remember, but I can do Alf from Home and Away. <laughs> Whichever one he is. <laughs> You're acting like a bloody hoon, mate. <laughs> a larrigan, a prize galah. <laughs> Whatever the fuck a galah is. <laughs> were you, whereabouts in Australia are you from? Melbourne. Melbourne. So you weren't affected by the flooding, were you? Is that why you've sat so high up? <laughs> Not taking any fucking chances, but <laughs> I'm a because people, you know, people lost everything in the flooding because they'd forgotten to tie their kangaroos down. <laughs> Serious. People drowned, and you wouldn't have expected that because they're all wearing hats with corks on. Any others? What, what was that one? Chinese. Ch you're Chinese. <laughs> you don't really sound Chinese, sir. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. And I think if I did a Chinese accent now, it would, it would, you know, it would smack of razy lacism. <laughs> well, that took you a long time, didn't it? <laughs> hang, hang on. Oh no, got it. Any others? Jamaican? <laughs> Jamaican? You know my name is... Are you aware of this? Oh, well, this will be a treat for you. <laughs> I'd like everyone in the room now to say my name in a Jamaican accent. One, two, three. <laughs> I am Jamaica. <laughs> he just went, yay! <laughs> Bomber clock. <laughs> Clearly got some bomber clots in, they've gone, oh. <laughs> Hang on a bloody minute. Any others? <laughs> Dublin? Where, where's the Dublin? Hello, are you from Dublin? I saw the documentary about your weddings, I thought it was terrific. <laughs> That's my favorite. You know I'm a plastic paddy, what they call a plastic paddy. I've got Irish parents, Irish passport, born in Ireland, but I speak and present myself in this way because I was raised and educated in the home counties, which goes to show what you can do when you apply yourselves. <laughs> That's my favorite, my favorite. Do you want to hear my favorite Irish joke? Maybe, I, maybe only Irish people get this joke. I'll tell you and see. What's the difference between a riot and a gypsy wedding? You can't buy a gate at a riot. <laughs> Maybe that's just an Irish thing, I don't know. Well, look, we'll move on. Every year in my show, I write some jokes that require a visual element to be fully enjoyed, and this year is no exception. So what I thought I'd do now is show you some of the pictures I've done to illustrate the next jokes. Do you want to see them? Yeah. Excellent news, because that is what happens next. <laughs> I've had some ideas. I'll kick off with some ideas. I've had an idea for a rape alarm that when you press it, it plays the Benny Hill theme music. <laughs> you know, to make it more of a caper. Some advice for you. The best way to test the temperature of a bath is with a baby's elbow. <laughs> I've had an idea of how to prop up our currency, the pound, against the euro and the dollar. What we do is we print new pounds, and this time the queen is smiling. <laughs> and if things get really bad, tits out, Your Majesty. <laughs> Little joke for you. What do you get if you cross the queen and Prince Philip? Killed in a tunnel. <laughs> Too soon? It's been 14 years, get over it. <laughs> All right, point taken, I'll drop that from the Royal Variety. <laughs> I say that, Prince Philip would probably piss himself. <laughs> Although he's 82, he'd probably piss himself anyway. <laughs> Some thoughts for you. When you think about it, a rhino is just a unicorn that didn't moisturise. 
Gillette. Gillette claims to be the best a man can get. What about a blowjob from twins? <laughs> Whatever happened to Jedwood? <laughs> the speed men shave in adverts. If I shaved at that kind of speed, my balls would be in shreds. <laughs> When I was told I was bipolar, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. <laughs> friend of mine's got OCD. For those of you that don't know, OCD is an abbreviation. It's just a shorter, quicker way of saying, I'd be a really annoying girlfriend. <laughs> True story. <laughs> if all the veins in your body were laid out in a straight line, you would die. <laughs> Let's talk about some social issues. My neighbour is noisy and nosy. He's always banging on the walls, shouting, is anyone there? I've fallen, is anyone there? <laughs> it's none of your business if anyone's here. <laughs> Still, he's gone quiet now. <laughs> Childhood is now effectively over by 11, which is when the pubs close and Uncle Terry gets home. Oh, Uncle Terry. <laughs> I was traumatised as a child. Our priest was cheating on me. <laughs> I just want to reach out to people that attempt suicide and say, come on, have another go. <laughs> keys to the city, that's a weird thing, isn't it, the keys to the city? Of course, they don't have that in Liverpool, do they? You just get given a coat hanger. <laughs> As a fashion statement, Socks with Sandals says, I'm either a German, a paedophile, or a cunt. <laughs> Quite possibly, all three. <laughs> Apologies to any paedophiles or cunts we have in. <laughs> it's not going to be any Germans at a comedy gig. Health. Let's talk about health. That's important, isn't it? I heard that because of women putting on so much weight during pregnancy, it's a good idea to take off your wedding ring. So I did. <laughs> Posh Spice, Victoria Beckham. She's so thin, she's got to be careful when she has a bath. Because if the water's too hot, she could turn into stock. <laughs> Obese children put a lot of strain on the NHS. Not to mention seesaws and swings. <laughs> You know, if things carry on as they are, it's predicted that in 40 years' time, the average toddler will be 43. <laughs> I tell you what, let's talk about religion. That couldn't possibly upset anyone. <laughs> if Jesus is the way, and to be a Christian is to be in Christ, then aren't all Christians just in the way? <laughs> Jesus says he loves me, but I worry about the age gap. Now, you'll notice out of deference and respect to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, I've let him bum me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a Muslim friend who's really religious. <laughs> Feel the tension in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a Muslim friend who's really religious. He knows the Quran backwards, which is... Handy, because that's how you read it. <laughs> Surprisingly well-informed and inoffensive joke about the Islamic faith. And that's because I'm not a fucking idiot. <laughs> what are the Christians going to do? Forgive me. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Speaking of Christians, any Catholics in? Yeah. Got a few Catholics? Catholics are a weird bunch. <laughs> Look at the rosary. Basically, anal beads. Um, good. Uh, excellent. Now, I think the next thing for me career-wise, ladies and gentlemen, will be doing some sort of interview show where I talk to people, you know, this kind of setup, a couple of, couple of chairs, you face off against each other, Parkinson, Jonathan Ross, Graham Norton, those kind of shows. That'd be great to get, but 
You can't just start doing that on TV like day one. That'd be tricky. So what I thought what I would do on this tour is practice. Get someone out of the audience every night with an interesting job or a claim to fame and interview them and get a bit of practice with the interviewing. So to that end, does anyone have an interesting job or a claim to fame? Oh, God, your hand's gone straight up. What do you do? You were on TV in Poland. <laughs> I will take that to mean you work in the adult film business. <laughs> so you've been on Polish TV. Okay, well, that is, that is a claim to fame. Well done, you. And, and Polish radio. Well, finally. <laughs> That's fucking sealed the deal. <laughs> okay, any, any other claims to fame? Interesting jobs? Any others? I mean, it could be from anywhere. It's... You're a priest. Who's a priest? <laughs> You're a priest. I'm looking at you. I'm thinking you might have had some dealings with priests. <laughs> just stand up, just for a second. Just turn around, just so people can see you. See? I mean, am I... Am I being cynical? <laughs> or is he definitely not a fucking priest? Any other interesting jobs? What, sorry? I own my own pizza shop. You own your own pizza shop? Yeah. You sound fucking chuffed with yourself. <laughs> I own my own pizza shop. <laughs> you know, there's a massive problem with obesity in this country. You should be fucking ashamed. <laughs> pizza, well done. Well done. And, and, and you, the best pizza, you say? Voted best pizza in Britain. Voted best pizza in Britain by you? <laughs> Well, what? Best independent pizza. Best independent pizza. What, what, what? I didn't care the first time. <laughs> you can. I mean. <laughs> Any other unusual jobs or claims to fame? I'm a You're a what? A funeral director. A funeral director. <laughs> Love. Your voice couldn't go any better with your job. <laughs> He's fucking dead. <laughs> How am you? Dead. <laughs> fucking shit here. <laughs> okay, so funeral director, that's pretty, that's interesting. I like that as a job, that's fa fascinating. Any other interesting jobs? What's your name? Caroline. Caroline, what do you do, Caroline? I work in TV. You work in TV? What, what do you do in TV? You work on what, sorry? You work on Holby City. Uh, uh, <laughs> well done, I love it. I love what you've done with Holby City. I think the fucking genius move with Holby City recently was, was casting Hugh Laurie and changing the location to America. <laughs> well done, you. I think we should talk to the funeral. Should we talk to the funeral director? <laughs> Funeral director, what are the chances of you getting down here? Don't fucking jump or we'll have to bury you. <laughs> but if you can make your way down to here, then we could talk to funeral director. That sounds exciting. While he's making his way down, yeah, give him a, give him a smatter. He's making his way. <laughs> while, he's, while he's making his way down, because it's a big old venue, it'd take a minute. Any other claims to fame in the room? Any other, any other exciting? You're a what? Paleontologist. You're a paleontologist in Birmingham. <laughs> In case any dinosaurs, it's, it's dinosaur bones, yes? Yeah. And you, you look at those. Not just, Not just dinosaurs. What, have you got another part-time job in Asda, have you? <laughs> what, what else do you look at? Um, different fossils. Like, different fossils, wow. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure paleontologists, I'm sure that's a brilliant, wonderful scientific thing to do, but I did a project on dinosaurs when I was six, and I loved it. I was very excited, and I did lots of pictures, and I stuck them in, and I did a whole project on dinosaurs, and I loved them. And then what I did, and this is an interesting note to you, I grew up. <laughs> I'm still doing my dinosaur book, I like it. <laughs> What's, well, I'll indulge you. What's your favorite dinosaur? A velociraptor. A velociraptor because of Jurassic Park. <laughs> Oh, but you might as well have said Barney. 
<laughs> Row up. Um, where the fuck is this Undertaker gone? <laughs> I'm slightly worried that there's been a death in the village <laughs> and he's been called away. <laughs> where the fuck is he? <laughs> where the fucking hell did you come from? <laughs> come and say hello. You're a funeral director. Hello, how are you? Very nice to meet you, sir. Come and say hello. Right, how are you, sir? Have a sit down. I'm all right. What's your... <laughs> Sorry. How am ya? <laughs> Have I too bad me, old booker? OK, you're not a gangster rapper, so just hold that like a... <laughs> hold that like a normal human being. OK. <laughs> what's, what's your name? I didn't even get your name. John. John. OK, well, I'll tell you what, I'll set this up properly. Hello, my name's Jimmy Carr, and I'm joined this evening by John, the funeral director from Birmingham. John. Tell us then, what does your what does your sort of what does your average day involve? Uh, Making coffins and doing funerals and doing funerals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Making coffins. Yeah, yeah. Collecting uh, deceased. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly terrified by you. <laughs> How, how, how do you, so you collect the body, so in a hearse or in a, just the back in of a, a transit? In a private ambulance, sort of like a transit, but a bit more <laughs> sophisticated. <laughs> a bit more sophisticated. When you say that. a private ambulance, is it just a transit with ambulance written on it in pen? <laughs> <laughs> in dirt? <laughs> not really, no, not, not quite a lot. OK, so, so you go and collect them from the... So you have to turn up all kind of, yeah. you know, in a black suit and stuff, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You... That's why I'm wearing this, so nobody recognises me. <laughs> they're not going to recognise you anyway because they're dead. <laughs> they probably. I just I can't believe I'm here with you, nice one. <laughs> this is unreal. Man. Must be lovely to meet someone who's just still breathing. <laughs> <laughs> lovely fucking change for you. Um, do you get involved in the embalming? Uh, uh, not so much. No, when I first started, I had a bit of, you know, I said, well, paint with the grim stuff, but not so much now. I've been doing it, I've been doing it years. Sorry, so not so much now? No. It sounds like there was an incident that stopped you from doing it. No, no, it Sounds no. like they went, hang on, get away from that, that's not oh, for no. eating. <laughs> no, no, I, I tend not to do much with the bodies anymore, like, <laughs> if that's the wrong, if that's the right thing to say. You don't do so much with the bodies no. now? No, <laughs> no, no, I'm more to do with coffins and funerals and... Now, have you, you work in this industry. Is there any... Now, necrophilia is something that's talked about. <laughs> I'm only asking. <laughs> because people think they're going to get away with it, but ultimately, you know, they'll get caught because some rotten cunt will split on them. <laughs> it's my necrophilia joke, everyone. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, I've been caught yet. You haven't been caught yet. <laughs> Do you want to hear my favourite, like, funeral joke? Well, not Undertaker joke. I don't know if this is, like, based on a true thing, but uh, you, you might know this, even. They're, they're an old lady, beautiful, nice old lady, and, uh, she, she, you know, she, her husband's died. And she goes to the funeral parlour where, where you would work on it, and she's talking to the guy that does your job, and she says, he's beautifully laid out. She said, oh, you know, that classic sort of thing, oh, he's never looked better, he looks lovely, but... But I wanted him to be in his blue suit, and you've got him in his brown suit. Could you, could you put him in his, in his blue suit, not his brown suit? And the guy says, not a problem, madam. And then leans out the door and goes, change the heads on two and four. Because <laughs> presumably, once you're burying them, do, do things get stolen? Do, do like, because people get buried with jewellery and stuff, do things No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, nothing like that. Nothing like that. It's a nice watch, man. <laughs> 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 and what do you uh, you live in Birmingham? Uh, well, Cried well, Leaf, just outside Birmingham. <laughs> black country. In the black country. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, 
What's that? That's an interesting thing. How did you get into it? How did you get into being a...? Uh, I did for my work experience when I was at school. <laughs> you did your work experience? Yeah. It sounds like you turned up to that meeting late. <laughs> What's left, sir? Well, you're going to be working with corpses. <laughs> that's, quite, that's quite a cool thing, though, isn't it? Sure. Has anyone ever woken up? Because <laughs> you hear stories about something to do with fluids in the spine. You hear stories about people kind of bolt upright. In... Oh, no, never. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. You just position them how you want, you're away. <laughs> <laughs> now, John, well, look, you've come up and shared a bit about what you do, and I think that's an interesting thing to do. It's a, like, it's a life less ordinary work as a funeral director with the kind of corpses and things and, and death. You've got to deal with it. Hard part of life, but whatever. Um, I feel, I feel like I should give something back. And the thing that I'm good at is writing jokes. I'm good at doing sort of one-liners. So I'd like to do a joke for you about any... It's sort of like my party piece, John. It's what I can do, what I can offer the world as jokes. So what would you like a joke about? Could be anything at all. Could be funeral directing, could be getting married, could be anything you want, anything at all. I will write a joke from, like off the top of my head, just really quick. Drum and bass music. <laughs> <laughs> Why did... Why did the lion get lost in the forest? I don't know. Because jungle is massive. Yes! <laughs> black, black, black! <laughs> I, think that was, I think that was too easy. I think that was too easy a thing. So why don't we go for something else? Go for something more difficult. More do anything at all. It can be as abstract as you want. Motorbikes. <laughs> All right, okay. Okay, so two motorcycle guys, like bikers, like, like Hells Angel bikers, right? Two guys, massive bikes. Okay. The, the, uh, walk into a bar. They're all in the Harley Davidson kit or whatever. Helmets on. Walk into a bar. The barman sees them coming. The barman goes, drinks, gentlemen. And, and, and the bikers go, cheese and onion crisps. Because <laughs> there's two of them. There's two of them. That's pretty good as well. And now I should probably just. just and I, but we don't, John, we don't, this isn't like a setup thing. I, didn't, I don't know you, right? So like off the top of my head, I just, you said bikers. You could have said anything. Or motorbikes, and I did bikers. And off the top, and two of them, and then. Brilliant. It's John, everyone, give him a round of applause. John, thank you so much. Really appreciate it coming up, man. Thank you so much. Hey, oh, you want to go back there? You can go around that one. Thanks, man. John, everyone. <laughs> oh. I very much enjoyed my brilliant motorbike joke. <laughs> there was no joke there, John. We're just fucking with you. <laughs> That's the nicest man. I hope when I die, he buries me. <laughs> Don't interfere, John. <laughs> Leave that alone. <laughs> I didn't like it when I was alive. <laughs> <laughs> right, more on me. Um, my girlfriend said to me, during sex, she said, did you remember to lock the front door? I said, yeah, there's no way you're going to escape. <laughs> I had a relationship with a blind girl, which was rewarding but challenging. It took me ages to get her husband's voice right. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see that coming. <laughs> Neither did she. Who picks up guy dog shit? <laughs> Some young women drink so much they black out and can't remember what happened the night before. If that's you, don't worry, love, I made a video. <laughs> I shouldn't joke, my granddad was an alcoholic. We used to call him Alco Pops. <laughs> I remember he used to press flowers. Well, I say that, used to fall over a lot in the garden. <laughs> Have you all been to the cinema recently? Has everyone been to the cinema? Yeah. See, there's an advert now in the cinema telling you not to buy pirate DVDs because it's not the real cinema experience. And then it goes on to say, because if you buy a pirate DVD, someone might get up in the middle of the film and go for a piss. And you think, yeah, that is annoying. But it's a lot like being in a cinema. <laughs> My ex-girlfriend bought me the Kama Sutra last year as a gift, which put me in a very awkward position. 
I'd like to talk about a sex act that I don't fully understand. Are you all familiar with the 69, yes? <laughs> no, I like the 69 as much as the next man. <laughs> Hoping he is a man, that would be terrible. <laughs> I like the 69, but I don't, I don't really understand it because it's an incredibly intimate thing to do with another human being. But how does the 69 ever occur? It only ever happens when, when the, the man says to the woman, would you do that thing that I like? And the woman goes, yeah, all right, but only if you do that thing that I like. And the man goes, not a problem, away you go. And the woman says, no, because the last time I did the thing that you liked, you were a little bit sleepy afterwards. You fucked off to sleep. You said, we'll call it a 68. It's like a 69, but I owe you one. I like everything about the 69 apart from the view. <laughs> the perineum or taint. I like to call it the Amanda Holden. <laughs> because like Amanda Holden on Britain's Got Talent last year, it's the bit between the arsehole and the cunt. <laughs> Piers fucking Morgan. He's interviewing people now. When I said I wanted Piers Morgan to get Parkinson's, I didn't mean his fucking job. <laughs> You shaking your head at a Parkinson's joke. That's inappropriate. <laughs> right, let's try some rude stuff, see if we get along. <laughs> Lady wind. Queefing. <laughs> Fanny farts. <laughs> the expulsion of air from the JJ during sexual intercourse. <laughs> A cunt grunt. <laughs> there are two main responses when a queef occurs. Some couples, it doesn't matter how gnarly or squelchy the noise, they deny the queef. <laughs> Did you hear anything? No, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> and they move on. Some couples, it's a funny little noise, they have a little giggle, they move on. Not a problem. I like to go a third way. I like to pretend the vagina is talking to me. <laughs> What's that? There's a boy trapped down a well. <laughs> I like to think of myself as the vagina whisperer. <laughs> what happened? Are you getting a phone call? There's a Scottish lady getting a phone call. I imagine the drugs are arriving any moment. <laughs> All right. You switched it off and it rang anyway. Well, I'm not buying that fucking story. <laughs> Don't worry, it's OK. It's only a phone. Don't feel bad. It's a what, sorry? It's a late alarm to come and see me. Well, come and see me an hour fucking late. <laughs> You're not the one I've booked for the interval, are you? <laughs> it's very difficult to get dirty talk right. Have you noticed this? It's very difficult to get dirty talk right. Like, in a long-term relationship, it's fine, because you know where your boundaries are, you know your partner. But on a one-night stand, fraught with danger. I've got a story concerning a friend of mine. He's quite good at pulling. We were all at a party together, and he pulled a girl that none of us knew. Ended up back at her place that night having sex. Well done him. High five. <laughs> so he told us the story the next day. He said she started it. They were, they were having sex. She said, talk dirty to me. Or more accurately, talk dirty to me. <laughs> so from the roller decks of filth in his head, he came forth with this. And this would be fine for many of the ladies here. Within the confines of the bedroom, Within the boudoir, this would be an okay thing to say with a long-term, loving, trusting partner. On a one-night stand, maybe not. He said, You love it, you slut! <laughs> she said, I'm not a slut! <laughs> and there was a very awkward moment. Awkward as moments can be when you've just insulted someone your balls deep in. <laughs> he apologised profusely, needless to say, and they moved on. Imagine there's a story there, madam. <laughs> well, you know how when you've got a phrase you're not meant to say, it's all you can think to say? It's on the tip of your tongue. So, like, two minutes later, right, my friend, he somehow lost track of what he wasn't meant to say. Says it again. <laughs> you love it, you slut. She said, I'm not a slut. And he got into an argument with her. He didn't mean to. It was like a reflex. When she said, I'm not a slut for the second time, he went, well, we have just met. <laughs> She said, you don't know me. He said, well, that just proves my point. <laughs> Are there any couples in this evening? Give us a shout, the couples. Yay! Oh, lots of couples in tonight. This is a bit silly, I think. Uh, but for Valentine's, I got my girlfriend sex vouchers as her present. <laughs> I didn't realise they were transferable. <laughs> 
Turns out they accept them at her work. <laughs> you get to the stage in a long-term relationship where you want to experiment sexually. But, you know, it can be awkward. And what if she finds out? <laughs> I'm 10 years into a relationship now. Anyone be there anyone longer than 10 years? Yes. What's the longest we got in the room? 13. 13? 26. 26. Anyone more than 26? 28? More than 28? How, how long? For, sorry? You, you've, been you've been together for 43 years. <laughs> I think, come on, 43 years. Now, I obviously, I don't know what it's like after 43 years. I think that's an extraordinary commitment, especially in this day and age. That is quite something. But I don't know if it's the same for you, because I've only been together with my girl for 10 years, but things have got quite predictable in the bedroom. Now, when I lower my entire ball bag into her mouth, <laughs> she is pretty much guaranteed to wake up. <laughs> same? Oh, you couldn't see that? He just went, yeah, same. <laughs> you look worried on their behalf. They've been married 43 years. Don't panic. They've tried everything. <laughs> Who, what's your relationship with them? What, how do you know them? That's your mum and dad. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. Well, I hope the image of your dad teabagging your mum hasn't... <laughs> I hope. I, for one... <laughs> I don't know about looking your parents in the eyes again. I don't think you'll be able to drink tea. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Shit, sorry. This, is, this will be hard for you to believe. I used to be a gentleman. I didn't used to talk about my sexual exploits, even with close friends. Never kiss and tell. Always just keep, you know, keep it private. It's private life for a reason. Private. Now, I'll talk about anything. It's great for me because it's a catharsis, but also I think it's good for everyone because you talk about things, everyone feels a bit more open and a bit more normal because, you know, there's weird things. Here's an example of an intimate detail I don't mind sharing with you. My girlfriend can't have orgasms during intercourse, but it's not a problem because I can. <laughs> I gave my girlfriend an orgasm and she spat it back in my face. <laughs> When my first girlfriend choked to death, it was a terrible blow. <laughs> I had to finish myself off. <laughs> there are inequalities between the sexes, and I think it's universally acknowledged men get an easier deal in our society than women. But I can think of an example where men get a very raw deal. You know, early on in a relationship, before you live together, when you're just kind of staying over each other's houses, very exciting phase in a relationship, in the history of the world, no man has ever been staying over at a girl's house and found a vibrator in her bedside drawer, and there's been a problem. There is only one reaction on record, and that is as follows. Oh, hello. <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> what is she like? <laughs> but when she finds a latex vagina in your sock drawer, <laughs> there is hell to pay. Explanations must be made. <laughs> I say sock drawer, it's actually the office. <laughs> I say latex vagina, it was the receptionist. <laughs> right, let's hear it from the, uh, the men of Birmingham. Give us a shout, the men. Yeah. Well, specifically, give me a shout, the heterosexual men of Birmingham. Yeah. Same voice is just a little bit lower, because you've got. <laughs> Have you all, have you had the conversation, the pub conversation, the classic pub conversation, if you had to sleep with a man, who would it be? Have you had that conversation? You had that conversation? You haven't had that conversation? I will save you the embarrassment, so I'll tell you what happens in that conversation. So you're in the pub with a mate, having a drink, talking about love and life, whatever. Out of nowhere, your mate goes, if you had to sleep with a man, who would it be? Well, I wouldn't, so it wouldn't be anyone. <laughs> but if you had to, who would it be? Well, I wouldn't, so it wouldn't be anyone. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though, so no one. But if you had to, well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, sleep with a man, who would it be? Well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though, so no one. But if you had to, well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't. But if you had to, I wouldn't. If you had to, I wouldn't. If you had to sleep with a man, who would it be? I wouldn't. But if you had to, I wouldn't. But if you had to, though, well, I wouldn't, though. But if you had to, I wouldn't. If you had to, 
Well, puff. <laughs> I got accused of being gay the other day. I was on stage doing a gig and I had a pink shirt on and someone accused me of being gay. I went, gay, it's a gay shirt, pink shirt, gay. I can't think of a more masculine colour for a shirt than a pink shirt, because a pink shirt shows the world you don't know how to put a wash on. <laughs> what could be more masculine? I often get asked, what celebrities have you been with, have you, have you slept with? And I don't want to give it the big one, but it was years ago, so it probably doesn't matter if I say. Do you want to know? Yeah. Yeah. Gary Glitter. <laughs> Have any of you seen my impressions? Have you seen any of my impressions before? I don't do many. I do, I do a few. Um, I'll, I'll do one for you now. Um, are, there any, um, are there any lesbians in? Does anyone enjoy smashing pasties? <laughs> huh? Are there any lesbians? There must be some lesbians, surely. What, is there a pool tournament on? <laughs> well, where are the lesbians? Are you up there somewhere? Oh, there's, there's some lesbians up there. Are there lesbians over here? Hello, girls, how are you? You all right? Very nice to have you in. The impression that I do, though it's more a piece of physical theatre than an impression per se, but it's the... Um, hang on, the cameraman's coming to get the lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's more a piece of physical theatre than an impression, but it's actually it's, it's the breakup of a same-sex relationship between two women. And I think it captures the emotional turmoil and the anguish when love breaks down, when you still love that person, but you're no longer in love with that person and you've got to go your separate ways. Would, would you like me to perform it for you now? OK. Just give me, just give me a second here. <laughs> yeah, what did you think was going to happen? I feel duty-bound now. What's your name, madam? Sure. What? Sheral. OK, fine, Sheral. <laughs> sure, we'll go with Sheral. And who, who are you with? Who's, who's the other half? Rosie. Rosie. Hi. I feel duty-bound to ask you the question I've asked every lesbian I've ever met. What would it take to get you back on solids? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a maybe, yes. <laughs> I'm two Bacardi breezes away. Come on. <laughs> I often get asked about heckles. That's a very common question for me. People want to know what's your favourite heckle, what's the worst heckle, that kind of thing. Um, I, I was doing a gig last year uh, on the Rapier Wit Tour, the, la the last tour, and uh, I was doing a joke about the Paralympics. Now, when you're doing a joke about the Paralympics, you've got to be a little bit careful when you're setting up a piece of material like that that you're not fuck-witted, disrespectful. So I was set setting it up quite carefully. I'd got one sentence in. All I said was, my favourite event at the Paralympics. And this guy at the back of the room, quick as a fucking flash, went, cripple jump. <laughs> I wish I hadn't, but I fucking pissed myself. <laughs> the other one I loved, I was doing a gig last year in Cardiff, and uh, front and centre, this guy front and centre where you're sitting there, madam, out of nowhere, 20 minutes into the gig, he just went... Dragon. <laughs> Sorry, there wasn't a massive pause before he said dragon. That was just to let you know what happened there. In my head, I had to go, whose court is that jacket? <laughs> to get it started in my head. But 20 minutes in, he just went, dragon. I went, what? He went, dragon. I went, yeah, but what do you want? He went, I'd like a joke about a dragon, please. <laughs> and he said it like I was the cunt for turning up in Wales without any dragon-based humour. <laughs> so in the, in the interval, I felt duty-bound to go and write a joke about a dragon. Do you want to hear my dragon joke? Yes. Okay. Two dragons walk into a pub. <laughs> Don't panic, John, it makes sense. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, I love John. I'm just imagining a funeral cause, you know, what do they call it when the funeral, when the, all the cars? Procession. procession, yeah, funeral procession with drum and bass. <laughs> <laughs> Has your hearse got blue lights underneath it? <laughs> I think that'd be quite good, that looking like, like it was haunted. <laughs> <laughs>
Two dragons walk into a bar. One says to the other, it's hot in here. The other one says, shut your mouth. <laughs> now, I thought what we might do this evening, Birmingham, obviously you've all come out to see the show this evening. I'm very grateful for that. I love my job. I love the fact you come out and see me live. But we're all sort of friends here, and you've bought tickets to come and see me at the show. So I tend not to get heckled in the way that I used to get heckled when I used to play the clubs. When I used to play the clubs, you were unannounced. The, you know, the venue was bigger than, than the name, so people would come along, they wouldn't be invested. If they didn't like it, they would shout rude things out. I used to love that, proper aggressive heckling. I thought, well, why don't we? Because yeah, people tend not to do it at these kind of gigs, because people don't want to fuck up the evening for themselves or for anyone else. <laughs> Hold your horses just one second. <laughs> People tend, one notable exception, people tend not to want to fuck the gig up. But I thought it's quite nice, it's quite a fun thing, heckles. So why don't we have a heckle amnesty, a little two, three minutes, where you can just fill your boots. If you've got something abusive to shout, have at it. <laughs> have you actually got Tourette's? That was, that was so quick. Can't fuck bum. And fuck bum, that's such a weird thing to shout, fuck bum. Like the rudest words you know. <laughs> Fuck, cunt bum. Any other heckles? <laughs> what, sorry? <laughs> Peter K was sold out, so you had to come here. <laughs> yeah. Unlucky. I bet he wouldn't have called you a cunt. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not Peter K. <laughs> it's a very different kind of show. Peter's show is good too. Um, any other heckles? My crisps tasted rubbish. <laughs> oh. Oh no, you didn't. Oh no, you didn't. <laughs> I became Latino there for a second. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, I did. I had crisps. Did you see? I had crisps. Jimmy Con Carney crisps. The good people are walkers for comic relief. They brought out a flavour of my crisps, and it was me and Al Murray and Frank Skinner and Stephen Fry. And then they made these crisps, and every packet they sold, they gave five pence to the starving people in Africa. And I said to them, why don't you just send them the fucking crisps? <laughs> it's got to make more sense, hasn't it? Because they can't be as fussy about the flavours. If you're starving, you're fine, aren't you? Well, these are a bit... Nah, fair enough. <laughs> Any other heckles? When's the comedy on? When's the comedy on? <laughs> When's the comedy on? Really? What's your name, sir? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> What's your name? David. David? Yeah. What's your favourite colour, David? Blue. Blue, OK. Seems like the fairest way to deal with you, David. There are so many things I could say. <laughs> Number between one and eight, David. Six. Six. Okay, and you said to me, when's the comedy on? <laughs> it says, if you want my comeback, you'll have to scrape it off your mum's teeth. These things don't lie, David. These things don't lie. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. She swallowed the lot. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? What, sorry? I've got, I've got a big nose. What are you, fucking retarded? I, I mean, I literally don't have a big nose. That's a weird hat. That's like an insult you've heard someone else use. And you've gone, I've got a big fucking laugh. That's going to work best with a comic with a big nose. What's your name, sir? Thomas. What do you do, Thomas? You're a student. What are you studying? Uh, mathematics. Mathematics? <laughs> are you at school, Thomas? I don't know if we should continue this any further, because it's starting to feel like grooming. <laughs> are you at school? Yeah, I'm at school. You got a big nose? I haven't. <laughs> Any other heckles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, what was that? That sounded good. Go on, what was that? <laughs> what was it? Pedophile. I'm a paedophile. <laughs> I was just fucking chatting to him. I've done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? Yes. <laughs> Dad? <laughs> any, any other heckles? Peter. What, sorry? <laughs> Posh prick. <laughs> Posh prick seems a bit harsh. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your name, sir? Miles. <laughs> Miles. <laughs> and you think I might be a bit posh? <laughs> All right, Miles. What's your favourite colour? Blue. Seems like the fairest way to deal with this. <laughs> you get some B L U E. <laughs> Number between one and eight, Miles. Four. Four. Mm. Oh. It says, if you've come as a cunt, you've won. <laughs> Bit of good news. <laughs> any more for any more? <laughs> Who the fuck has a side party? <laughs> You're going to kick yourself when I tell you. <laughs> Me. I think you know your doctor isn't great if the STI check is a taste test. <laughs> My girlfriend used to smoke after sex, so we started using lubricant. <laughs> I was in bed with a girl recently. She said, I want tonight to be magical. And it was. After I fucked her, I disappeared. <laughs> I go into an argument with my ex, and uh, in the middle of the argument, she went, what kind of an idiot do you take me for? I couldn't resist. I went, a fat one? <laughs> in my defence, she was fat. <laughs> she didn't get a suntan, she got crackling. <laughs> she was legally required to make a beeping noise when moving backwards. <laughs> she wasn't that big when we got together, but she bloomed. I mean, I've seen girls put on weight before, but she took the biscuit. On the plus side. <laughs> Just a nicer way of saying it. I quite like a euphemism. Of course, the classic euphemism is if someone's gay, instead of saying gay, you would say, he's a friend of Dorothy's. <laughs> if someone's really fat, I like to say, he's a friend of Greg's. <laughs> I had a super awkward moment on stage recently. So I was on stage doing a gig. I said, any questions? And someone went, are you ever going to have children? I said, I don't want to make you feel bad about asking, but my girlfriend and I actually can't have children. <laughs> the way we do it. <laughs> so he's trying the other way, because you can't get pregnant in the mouth either. <laughs> Are there any parents in? We got any parents? Give us a shout, parents. Yay! Has anyone got parents? Yay! You had to think about that. You're an idiot. The only point about parents is all parents have got a favourite. If your parents told you they didn't have a favourite, all it means is you weren't it. <laughs> Unless you're an only child. If you're an only child and your parents went out of their way to tell you they didn't have a favourite, that is bad. <laughs> With her last child, Angelina Jolie had a very difficult delivery. She wasn't in and had to pick it up from the sorting office. <laughs> in a long-term relationship, it's important to be a good listener. I think she's asleep. I might pop downstairs for a wank. <laughs> Are you all familiar with the phrase, fuck buddy? Have you all heard the phrase, fuck buddy? Yes? Yeah. I've got a friend that didn't know what that meant. I used it in a conversation, and, and he didn't know what it meant. I had to explain what a fuck buddy was. I said, well, it's like a friend you have regular sex with. He said, well, how's that different from a normal relationship? <laughs> I said, they're your friend. <laughs> and you have regular sex with them? It's like the opposite of a normal relationship. <laughs> I found out the hard way. There's a big difference between hanging out with a mate's girlfriend and hanging out of a mate's girlfriend. <laughs> it's a lovely turn of phrase. I could get a job on Sky Sports.
I got into an argument with my girlfriend. She said, you treat this house like a hotel. I said, I have never snorted cocaine off a hooker's tits in this house. <laughs> I told my girlfriend the top she was wearing was too revealing. I said, Jimmy sometimes cries after sex. <laughs> we, uh, we got into a row. Oh, you'll be familiar with this. If you're in a long-term relationship, this is the kind of scenario for a row that I think happens a lot. We got into a fight on the way back from a party. So we went to this amazing party. It's about 2.30 in the morning. We're driving home. So I'm driving. I haven't had anything to drink. Stone cold sober, driving. She's had quite a lot to drink. I mean, in terms of units of alcohol, she's had an awful lot to drink but she's not drunk. And I know she's not drunk. I know she isn't drunk because she told me she wasn't drunk 400 fucking times. <laughs> you know, like sober people don't. <laughs> anyway, the worst thing about this argument, I didn't even say anything. Someone else said something, and she was talking about that, and I just agreed with the fact that the other person said. And it was a fact. It wasn't a point for debate. It was a fact. So I was driving along, right? She's, she's talking a lot. I'm listening a little. <laughs> okay, my bad but she's telling me about the evening in real time. <laughs> and I was there for most of it, so I don't need to be hearing this. <laughs> a lot of the stories involve me. <laughs> right, so we're driving along, she tells me the story, and she, she got to the point, she said, this, this mutual friend of ours, this girl that we both know, she said, that girl, that girl said my dress was short. I went, yeah, it is. <gasps> <laughs> You're taking her side. <laughs> Why don't you go back to the party? Why don't you drive her home? It was short. I mean, it was a really short. It was what I would call a greyhound. <laughs> you call it a greyhound? It was just an inch away from the hair. <laughs> it was a really short skirt. So, like, I, I went, it is short, yeah. She went, oh, you're taking her side. Why don't you go back to the party and drive her home then, if you fancy her so much? Try to undermine me, you're saying I've got fat legs. <laughs> Suddenly, fucking Chewbacca's in the car. <laughs> What the fuck? There's just snot and... <laughs> Next thing I know, like, within 20 seconds, she's pulling on the car door. We're doing 40 miles an hour, middle of nowhere, 2.30 in the morning. She's going, I'll walk home. I'll walk home. Trying to open the car door. She's opening. She's not wearing a seatbelt because she's pissed. Opening the car door. Safer. Um, <laughs> opening the car door. I just stop the car. This is dangerous, right? So as soon as I stop the car, she fucks off out immediately, teetering on heels up the road. No coat, no money, no keys, no idea where she's fucking going. <laughs> I'll walk home, I'll walk home, you don't even fucking care, I'll fucking walk home. I'll walk home. I'll walk home. <laughs> so I have to do the dutiful boyfriend thing of driving along at four fucking miles an hour. <laughs> Come on, get back in the car. It's all my fault. It's not my fault, I've done fuck all here. <laughs> Come on, get back in the car, I'll buy you chips. <laughs> just please, just get back in the car. Anyway, long story short, I got arrested for curb crawling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think the best thing about a big, passionate argument is tumbling into bed together afterwards and lying in cold, grim silence until dawn. <laughs> Are you asleep? I can't sleep. I'm too full of hate. <laughs> Any fans of makeup sex in? Anyone had good makeup sex? Give us a shout, yes? Yeah. Makeup sex is pretty awesome, but timing is critical. Because if you get overexcited and you go for the makeup sex too early and the argument's still happening, that is a little bit rapey. <laughs> Let's hear it from the ladies of Birmingham. Give us a shout, ladies. You sounded very good spirits. Do you think you're easy to live with, ladies? Yes. The vast majority say yes. Well, this is going to be educational and informative. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how easy you are to live with, ladies, and I'm going to do it with a couple of questions, OK? Mm -hmm. Have you ever met a gay man? Yes. Have you ever noticed how happy homosexual men are? How joyful and carefree and full of life. 
We're going dancing, Bacardi Breezers. Hiya! <laughs> well, that's what we were like before we met you. <laughs> Interesting little fact for you. 3% of all new homes are built specifically for pensioners, and they're called coffins. <laughs> my grandmother, I loved her to death. <laughs> Smothered. <laughs> I'm joking, I fucked her. <laughs> now, I don't normally do political stuff on my stage show, you know, on the tour, but I saw something that caught my eye recently. It was in Croydon. Anyone in from Croydon? One person down there, I hope you're having a knife crime. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nice time, my, my bad. <laughs> so it was this thing, it happened in Croydon, I saw it in the local paper down in Croydon, and it was a BNP campaign. Are you familiar with this carnival of cunts? <laughs> so it's a British National Party campaigner, was handing out leaflets in Croydon High Street. And you know, when people are handing out leaflets, I mean, handing out leaflets in Croydon High Street for the BNP is the Everest of stupid, needless to say. But he's, uh, he's handing out these leaflets. You know, sometimes you don't look at a leaflet when you're you, in the high street. You just pick it up and kind of oh, take it, and you're a couple of steps before you look at the thing. So this guy picked up a leaflet. Oh, British National Party, that's interesting. Bang. <laughs> and properly connected with a punch. Now, I'm not advocating violence. No, never solved anything. But on this occasion, I will let it go, because he gave the BNP campaigner a black eye. <laughs> <laughs> and that is pretty genius. <laughs> Because for that fucker, that's adding insult to injury. <laughs> a lot of planning is going on in London for the 2012 Olympics. Sadly, most of it is being done by Al-Qaeda. <laughs> I just don't understand it. Why would you become an Islamic fundamentalist suicide bomber? On the off chance, you might get 72 virgins when you die. Become a Catholic priest and have them now! <laughs> <laughs> Life's for living, am I right? Yeah. My favourite suicide bomber of the last year. <laughs> oh, you're better than me because you haven't got a list. Whatever. Um, <laughs> my favourite suicide bomber... Well, I've got a couple that I really like. The Detroit bomber. Do you know this guy that flew into Detroit last Christmas? So he flew into Detroit airport. He had an explosive device in his underpants. The triggering device went off. The explosives didn't detonate. So there was smoke billowing around, but everything didn't blow up straight away, just smoke billowing. So the other passengers, you can imagine, in America, post 9-11, how they put him out, they didn't run and get a safety blanket and some water and a stewardess. No, they stamped the fucker out. <laughs> in quite a camp flamenco style, if this is anything to go by. <laughs> Possibly with a... <laughs> but, I mean, they fucking ruined this guy. They didn't kill him, but they ruined him. Now, normally, I would say, well, you know what? Fuck him. He was trying to kill innocent people as they flew home for Christmas. Fuck him very much. But my heart goes out to this guy, because his court case is coming up in America in the next couple of months, and he's going to have a very tough time in a court of law defending himself, because the prosecution have got it so easy. The prosecution are just going to go, you telling the truth? Yeah, I'm telling the truth. Were your pants on fire? <laughs> My favourite suicide bomber, though, he was an assassin suicide bomber in the United Arab Emirates, OK? He was sent to kill one man. He didn't. He just killed himself. <laughs> Technically a win for them, but I'm very happy with that. OK, so he, he was sent to kill this guy, and in order to get close to the guy he was going to try and kill, he had to conceal the bomb. He had the bomb concealed, wait for it, up his bum. <laughs> Literally a suicide bummer. <laughs> I mean, if people are going to start putting bombs up their bums, the shit is really going to hit the fan. <laughs> Now, I don't know how that bomb was detonated, but I like to think, in this day and age, even someone as fuck-witted as a suicide bomber, even someone that morally retarded, would have seen the opportunity for comedy in that situation. And that bomb, up his bum, would have been detonated something along the lines of... Pull my finger. <laughs> and passes by going, what did he have for lunch? <laughs> oh, I've got some more pictures. Do you want to see some more pictures? Yeah. See some more pictures. I was going to talk to you briefly about sports, ladies and gentlemen. Chinese gymnast Lu Li is the smallest person ever to have taken part in the Olympic Games. Lu Li was just four foot three inches tall. Wow, we was the second smallest. <laughs> 
Ice dancing. Of course, ice dancing won't be around. Any fans of ice dancing in? <coughs> ice dancing, of course, won't be around forever because of global warming. <laughs> and AIDS. <laughs> Snooker and dance. Snooker and dance have seen their viewing figures steadily decline since the introduction in 1983 of remote controls. <laughs> Just 22% of Liverpool fans reside in Liverpool. The rest are on remand in other cities. <laughs> Wayne Rooney. <laughs> He's not as clever as he looks. <laughs> Let's talk about technology. Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking is sort of half man, half computer. I bet when he dies, it's a virus. <laughs> He's got medical insurance and Norton. <laughs> in America, they're called astronauts. In Russia, they're called cosmonauts. And in Britain, they're called balloonists. <laughs> the greatest ride at Disney is the girl that works in the Toffee Apple kiosk. <laughs> Pornography. I'll come to that later. if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> and the expression, of course, will be that of a turtle shitting. <laughs> the thing with internet porn is it still has the power to surprise us. I saw something on the internet the other day that really shocked me. It was one man having sex with one woman. <laughs> there was no gangbang, no DP, no anal, no dwarves, <laughs> no three-way, no water sports, no girl on girl. No gagging, no rimming, no granny fanny, <laughs> no DV, no DA, no shemales, no milfs, and no one look barely legal. It was just one man having sex with one woman. I thought, well, who comes up with this crazy shit? <laughs> Let's talk about sex. Adult supervision. To me, adult supervision sounds like the ability to see through bras. The average speed of ejaculation is 43 miles per hour, which is why it's so important to keep it away from children. <laughs> 20 is plenty. <laughs> Around children, you've got to be very careful with the language that you use. For example, say fiddlesticks instead of vibrators. <laughs> I don't think lesbians should be allowed to use vibrators. You've made your decision. <laughs> no more sin on the fence. <laughs> Either. <laughs> Hermaphrodites. <laughs> Can go and fuck themselves. <laughs> a transvestite is a man that dresses to look like a woman, and the woman they dress to look like is Jane MacDonald. <laughs> Someone told my girlfriend the best way to improve oral sex was to hum. All I'm saying is the theme from Corrie is not erotic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anal sex for women is like Marmite. It's brown and it smells funny. Condoms come in packs of three, ideal for married couples, because there's birthdays, Christmas, Valentine's. <laughs> I don't think you should ever treat a woman as a sex object, but I do think you should give them a rinse after you've used them. <laughs> you don't agree? You'd rather be left looking like a plasterer's radio? <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend's got a cleanliness problem downstairs. Yeah, the kitchen's a fucking state. <laughs> I'm joking, she's actually got a virulent yeast infection in her vagina. <laughs> Let's talk about relationships. The last relationship I had I ruined by blurting out, I love you too early, which gave away the fact I was hiding behind the curtains. <laughs> People often ask me about most embarrassing moment. It's probably when I first got introduced to my girlfriend's parents. I remember my girlfriend saying, there's the bad man there. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I don't like the term partner, because it makes it sound like we're fighting crime. <laughs> I don't like the term housewife or stay-at-home mum. I prefer to say lazy sluts. <laughs> My girlfriend says she's good at doing two things at the same time. If that's the case, why is a threesome out of the question? <laughs> Don't judge me, I improvised. <laughs> it's not that bad, it's got a face. <laughs> I often walk around the house naked till the neighbours chase me inside. Some friends of mine just had a baby, but because of some issues, they had to use a surrogate mother, and because of a medical thing, they had to use a sperm donor. So really what I'm saying is, some people I don't know just had a baby. <laughs> One of the symptoms of having conjunctivitis is that when you wake up in the morning, your eyes are so sticky you can hardly open them. My girlfriend has it a lot. <laughs> Sometimes she gets conjunctivitis on her tits. <laughs> Right, final one of these. This is my favourite joke in the show. I'm going to try not to fuck it up, but I slightly fucked it up last night because I, I giggled halfway through. <laughs> but I'm going to dig deep for Birmingham. Come on. OK. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> when I broke up with my first wife, I didn't want anything from her in the settlement except a pint of milk, four egg yolks, a vanilla pod, an ounce of caster sugar and two fluid ounces of single cream. She mixed the whole lot up in a bowl and she threw it in my face. But on the plus side, I did get custody. I'll do. Good. Thanks very much. I think civil partnerships are gay. Apparently, one of the biggest fears is the unknown, like, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, taking the dog for a walk is a good way to find a woman. But what if you want to find a woman who's still alive? <laughs> did you read this? Did you read about this American man that's suing his ex-wife to get back the kidney he donated to her while they were married? That is taking the piss. <laughs> My father always used to say to me, there's no such word as can't. I said, no, I called you a cunt. <laughs> People claim to be into recycling, but you should see their faces when you rinse out a condom. <laughs> I do a bit of baking. Does anyone else bake cookies and cakes and things? Yeah. I do a bit of baking. My specialty is a brownie with nuts, which I call a scout. <laughs> Come on, where's your sense of fun? Um, <laughs> do you get annoyed by cold callers? You know, of an evening, you're, you're at home relaxing after a hard day at work, watching TV, flicking through a magazine, the phone rings, it's a strange voice you don't recognise, talking about something you're not interested in. Oh, Mr Jimmy, I have your baby now, you send money quick! <laughs> you bad man! <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> do you get this? Do you get the public-private phone call problem? So this is when you're at work surrounded by colleagues or in, in the pub surrounded by friends. You get a phone call off your other half and at the end of the phone call they say something that you would normally say something back, like it's like your thing, but you don't want to say it because there's people around, it's a bit embarrassing. So at the end of the phone call goes, all right, bye. <laughs> no, no, you know I do. <laughs> no, there's people around. <laughs> I don't want to. Well, well don't be like that. <laughs> All right, I'll say it. I want to choke you with my cock. <laughs> a charity worker came to my front door and they were collecting for a homeless shelter, so I gave him a cardboard box. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers, am I right? <laughs> I did one of those nude calendars for charity. Yeah, child line were livid. <laughs> I did a gig for Alzheimer's sufferers. It was brilliant. Two hours, one joke. <laughs> I did a gig for Alzheimer's sufferers. <laughs> right, final thought. If only Africa had more mosquito nets, then every year we could save millions of mosquitoes from dying needlessly of AIDS. <laughs>
I've been Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Nice of you, Birmingham. I couldn't ask for a better audience. It would hurt your feelings. <laughs> well, that's pretty much my show. Um, I thought a nice way to end might be there's a theory in comedy. Lenny Bruce, the American satirist, was the first to say it. He said, the audience is a genius. And the idea is, the audience, you regulate comedy. You decide what a comedian can and can't say on stage. Because if you don't laugh at a joke, it is not socially acceptable. If you do, then just by definition, it is socially acceptable. I thought, well, we could put that to the test tonight. We could start gently, work our way up, and see at what stage Birmingham goes, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Do you want to give it a go? Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, we'll start gentle, we'll work our way up, okay? So everyone's comfortable. At some stage, people will stop laughing, and then that's the end. Hmm. <laughs> Exciting. Well, we'll start gentle. Pope Benedict. Incidentally, he's called Pope Benedict because he comes with a hollandaise sauce. <laughs> Hang on, that's not a hollandaise sauce. <laughs> Benedict! <laughs> As head of the Catholic Church, Pope Benedict is the boss of every Catholic priest in the world. He's effectively king of the pedos. <laughs> I read about a Catholic priest that exposed himself, so they defrocked him. <laughs> they don't help themselves, do they? <laughs> well, they do, that's part of the problem. This scandal could bring the Catholic Church to its knees. <laughs> You've got to finish that one in your own head. <laughs> Somewhat ironically. <laughs> I personally, I don't think the Pope should worry about the sex scandal. It'll all get sorted out soon enough when Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, comes back from the made up. <laughs> well, you all seem pretty happy with a little bit of Christian baiting, yeah? Should we take it up again? My girlfriend could be really loud during sex. I don't know why, she knows no one's coming to help. <laughs> Fine. Up another gear? <laughs> Treat them mean, keep them keen. You all heard that expression? Yeah. Treat them mean, keep them keen. Treat them mean, you will keep them keen. If that was really true, if that really worked, treat them mean, keep them keen, wouldn't the Jews absolutely adore the Germans? <laughs> Really? A round of applause on a joke about the worst thing that's ever happened? <laughs> ever? Where do we go from there? It's a joke about the worst thing that's ever happened. Hang on. This might offend some of you. <laughs> people say, smug, sanctimonious people, in my opinion, but people do say from time to time you hear them, Princess Diana should have been wearing a seatbelt. If she'd been wearing a seatbelt, she'd be here with us today. To those people I say this, I say, you try snorting cocaine off a cock in the back of a limo while wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> you can't be fucking done. <laughs> I saw that little, that little shaky head there, and I presume that was disapproval, madam. But to me, that looked like you were going, it can't be done, I've tried a million fucking times. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we go from there? Okay, so we've had one fucking hell, but everyone else seems fine. <laughs> you better fuck off. <laughs> a child can drown in just four inches of water, but you might as well run a bath. <laughs> that feels like it should have been more offensive than it was. A child died in that joke. But well, I tend to do wordplay, so you, sort of, you get away with murder with wordplay, literally in that last joke. <laughs> Because people go, well, it's just a joke, it doesn't really matter. Actually, when you talk about real stuff that's happened in your life that's a bit darker, and sort of observational stuff, which people think of as being more sort of family-friendly, but when you talk about real stuff that's happened to you, that's where people get more offended, if it happens to be darker. And, and you know, there's a weird thing where that's where comedy's useful. When bad things happen in your life, you need a bit of cheering up. That's where comedy has a purpose in our lives. Hmm. 
But let's talk about something that's happened to me recently, and I'm fine talking about it, so I, I don't think it should be a problem for you to hear about it. But it is a little bit more, because it is a real thing. It's, some people get a bit edgy, a bit more offended by the stuff that's real. My girlfriend uh, recently had a miscarriage, and it was doubly bad because I had to pay for it. <laughs> That feels like we're getting somewhere. <laughs> and I realise an abortion can be a very upsetting thing for a woman. <laughs> but at the same time, who doesn't get a little confidence boost when they lose a bit of weight? <laughs> well, let's cut to the chase on this, shall we? Let's talk about what you can and what you cannot say on stage. A very good friend of mine, a guy that I've worked with the last 10 years, we're pretty close, we've written jokes together and we, we know each other. He's, he's, he knows that I say this on stage, he's fine with it. But Frankie Boyle, you all know Frankie, yes? Yeah. Now, Frankie got into a lot of trouble last year for doing a joke on stage that contained the word Down syndrome. And I think it's sad. I think it does nothing more than betray his ignorance and insensitivity. What a spastic. <laughs> Why are they called sunshine variety coaches when all the kids on board look the same? Well, if that joke's getting a round of applause, I'm out. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to back away from there. It's a weird thing, though, because I suppose the thing that we've all got in common in this room is we all share a sense of humour. We're all laughing at the same kind of things. It's a weird thing where I laugh the very loudest just before I, I, I have a sense of humour failure. I find that if the closer to the edge, the funniest jokes for me are the jokes that I laugh at, and as I'm laughing, I go, I'm a terrible human being. <laughs> Funny, though. But I'm a terrible human being. <laughs> Do you want to hear the joke that got me? Yes. I heard a joke, it's an Australian joke, just a pub joke from Australia. That gives you an idea of how fucking brutal it is. <laughs> the Aussies came up with it. Are you sure you want to hear this? Yes. Okay, well, I'll just, I'll cleanse my palate before I tell you this. Like a, like a sorbet. It's like a solero. <laughs> How do you make a gay fuck a woman? Shit in her cunt. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. Don't think I don't know, because I know. I, I know. I know. There's no use giving me a look as if I didn't pay £25 to listen to this film. Because <laughs> you did, and you know you did. <laughs> I realise my jokes can often be brutal and cruel. And when you think about the content of what I'm talking about in these jokes, it is unacceptable, frankly. <laughs> but then, the only purpose of these jokes is to make you laugh. There's no message here. No one's learnt anything this evening, have they? <laughs> I fucking hope not. Because, <laughs> I mean, the only purpose for these jokes is to make you laugh for two hours. It's to, it's to release endorphins. That's all I'm doing up here. They're just jokes. I'm just messing around. And some people, some people just like being offended. It's a weird thing. I did a gig in Newcastle last year, and this woman came up to me afterwards at the signing, face like fucking thunder. I went, that was disgusting, rude, juvenile, filth. No better than last year. <laughs> oh, I don't know what the fuck I meant to do with that. <laughs> Bloody crazy fool. Um, sorry, about, sorry about that joke. You realise that joke about the Australian, uh, the Australian pub joke? You realise that's the only joke you will now be able to remember? <laughs> That's the way that works. Whatever the most offensive joke is, is the only one you'll be able to recall. The next time you're at a family wedding or a funeral... <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> Poor John. <laughs> I've just... I know you're here to collect the body. I've... I've lost my husband. I feel so terribly low. Maybe, maybe a joke would cheer me up. <laughs> How'd you make a gay fuck a woman? <laughs> I'll get me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I haven't been up here on my own this evening. First and foremost, I interviewed him earlier. He's a funeral director. If you die, wouldn't you want to be looked after by him? And when I say looked after, I mean nothing more than what is normal. <laughs> John, everyone, give him a round of applause. Thanks, John. Thanks for coming down. Appreciate it.
Thank you so much for coming out, especially this evening, because it's been sort of, you know, the DVD record, which is always a bit of a nerve-wracking gig. And I fucking love playing Birmingham, and I love coming here, and I couldn't if you didn't buy tickets and come out to the show. So thanks so much. I really do appreciate it, because I love my job. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.